praise. Good morning. And welcome to our home today as we worship together again like this. In our hallway we have a picture which is here in front of us just now with a verse of scripture taken from Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. As for me and my house we will serve the Lord. I hope that's the motto over your home, over your house today. Well before we do anything else and Mark went for a really early morning mm -hmm. walk yesterday and he made a prayer while he did so. So let's join him on his walk as we pray together. Eternal God, we say good morning to you. Hallowed be your name early in the morning before we begin this day we praise your glory renew our bodies as fresh as morning flowers open our inner eyes as the sun casts new light upon the darkness which prevailed over the night deliver us from all captivity. Give us wings of freedom as a mighty stream running continuously as day follows day. We thank you for the gift of this morning and a new day to work with you. Amen. That prayer certainly makes you feel better doesn't it? Better about life, better about ourselves and better about faith. God is so very good. Lord, thank you for the precious gift of new life. A new day um, which brings about new opportunities and new experiences for all of us. I really do think that every day is a chance to experience yeah. new life. Yeah. What an awesome creator God we have, a beautiful world and a place for each one of us in it. So Andrew, what do you want to tell us about what happened um, this week? Okay, um, well we've had another busy week, we've given mm -hmm. out food parcels, we've made contact with other agencies in the city as to how we can work together, um, we've been on Zoom meetings and we've been planning no, special... I, 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 I wasn't thinking more about what happened to us, what happened with us, okay. what happened to me, um, you yeah. know, my, my hair. Yes, a let, bit short. Yeah, listen, let me, let me explain. I ordered some clippers because my hair was getting so out of hand, like many of us are experiencing. And Andrea volunteered to be the barber. I did, but there was no one else in the house to do that, was there? But, but listen, there's five different blades, the smallest to the biggest. We, we sat in the garden and Andrea started with the biggest, the 12 millimetre blade. And it was going really well. It was. And, and, and I thought, I did a little bit more of. So Andrea went to the next size down, the, the, the eight millimeter. Um, she started again at the front and <laughs> this time she screamed and she ran indoors. <laughs> she got the, the three millimeter one and I was sheared like a sheep, led to the slaughter. <laughs> Let me explain. I, I didn't have my glasses on, so I thought I'd picked up the eight millimeter, but actually I picked up the three mm. millimeter. <laughs> and, and you know, friends, in that moment, there was a, a choice to make, wasn't there? Do you get crossed? What are you doing? <laughs> or actually, do you laugh? Yeah, and, and, and we laughed. Fortunately, we, did. we both laughed. Listen, it was the first time in our 30 years of marriage that you've cut my hair. And the last. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll let you, I'll oh, let no. you do it again, but, when, but with the right <laughs> blade this yeah, time. Yeah. But here's the thing, um, perspective came. Hmm. Really, it, it did. What's a bad haircut day when so many people in our world yeah. are going through some really yeah. tough situations, some really difficult time with, with, with family decisions and, and work and the worry of the future and illness. And of course, so many have experienced bereavement. Yeah. You're absolutely right. We do need to get perspective, don't we? But it was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> but friends, let's count our blessings just now and sing together. Uh, it's, it's a hair raising <laughs> song. We're going to lift 
Our praise to God, our Creator, the author of life, of fun and enjoyment, as we sing together, Lord, I lift your name on high. his family then that is church so this is church you know there was a lot of talk in the news and headlines on social media when this lockdown first started the church has had to close and churches have shut down and it caused quite a debate didn't it on one level it, it was true yeah. um, the buildings were not open mm. for people to enter physically and to gather but on another level, it was not true, for the church is not just the building. We, we are the church. Do you remember that mime we learned as children? We used to do it on our hands. Do you remember? Here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors, and there's all the people. Yeah, do you remember it? Try it at home now, um, as you're sitting there in your homes. Do that together, can you put your hands together? Just, oh no, there's one or two not doing it. We'll wait for you. Okay? Oh, thank you for joining in. Here we go, all together. Go. Here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors, and there's all the people. There's a really important truth in that. The church is the people. We are the church. And this space now, in these moments, in your homes, becomes a sanctuary. You and God, God and me, God and us. We are serving the Lord in our houses. And of course, most people who attend church services spend most of their week outside of the four walls that we call church, the building. And the challenge has always been, how do we do church yeah. in, in those places and spaces? You know, at the office, at school, in the university, in the factory, in the workplace, with our families at home, or, or our neighbours, or in our streets, or with our communities. Yeah, wherever we are, yeah. the majority of the time mm. away from church. Mm. And in these days, we've had a heightened awareness, haven't we, of mm. that, as we've reached out to others as we've connected naturally with our neighbours. It might have been difficult at first, but conversations have happened and uh, we've got to know them even better in these days. And of course, we're all keeping in touch with people we know and people we um, share our lives with, family and friends and members of our fellowships. 
and we gather together yeah. in worship like this. So literally thousands have responded to what the church is doing in these days. It's incredible as the church has been reimagined, as it's been um, recreated in a yeah, way yeah. and uh, in innovative yeah. and creative ways. Yeah. But of course, we are looking forward to meeting again one day physically when we gather in one place, God's people spiritually energized to go into all kinds of places in his name. But these spaces in this lockdown have helped us to experience church together yeah. as people in all kinds of places. Friends, listen to this reading from Paul and Anne and from their home. And then we'll watch a video of a Bible story that happened in someone's house. And there were loads of people in the space and the place where it happened. A people place. If this is not a place where tears are understood, where do I go to cry? If this is not a place where my spirits can take wing, where do I go to fly? If this is not a place where my questions can be asked, where do I go to seek? If this is not a place where my feelings can be heard, where do I go to speak? If this is not a place where you'll accept me as I am, where can I go to be me? If this is not a place where I can try to learn and grow, where can I just be me? Church, Church is, is about, about people. I hope we're not too proud to learn something from a younger man. But this man has no respect for anyone. Oh, he has plenty of respect for thieves and vagabonds. Hey! Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Friends, come on down. There's plenty of room. <laughs> Welcome! My roof! It's no good. No good! Just let me die! My friend, your sins are forgiven you. Sins? Forgiven? Who can forgive sins but God? Let me ask you a question. Which is it easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you, or get up and walk. But to prove to you that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins, I command you, pick up your bed and walk. <gasps> oh, yes! To God! <laughs> Glory to God! Praise the Lord! It's impossible! It's true! I've been healed! I've been healed! What a great story yeah. um, found in Mark chapter 2. And I love that bit when the homeowner says, My roof! My roof! as the man is lowered through the roof on a stretcher to see Jesus. You know, the house was packed, wasn't it? Mm. So many people in one place. There was certainly no social distancing no, right. going on there. And the room would have been full of voices and choices. You know, lots of people talking at the same time with their voices, as you do at gatherings, catching up, sharing news, and talking about what's going on, and lifting their voices so that they can be heard. Yeah. And then there's the choices that cause the people to be there. Stories were going around about a rabbi from Nazareth. Some had seen his miracles and, and some had come and made the choice in hope that another miracle would be seen. Yeah. Maybe others wanted that miracle for themselves. Others had heard him speak and they'd made a choice to want to hear more. And, and there was no online services then. Others made a choice to be there to catch him out and to trip him up. And sadly and interestingly, they were the religious leaders. 
Yeah, that's really sad, isn't yeah. it? Um, we can be so religious yeah. that we even try and try please us. Um, so all of these voices and choices, they, they come together in one place and, and it's absolutely heaving. Um, it's so busy that people couldn't get in through the door or the window. The only way was through the roof. Wouldn't it be great if when we get back to our churches, the only way that people can get in because it's so busy is, is through the roof. There was such a buzz, there was such a, a good vibe in that place. Why was it packed? Why was the building so full? Well, the answer is simple, but it's also awesome. Because Jesus was there. It was the place to be, because Jesus was at the heart of the story. And Jesus made a voice, and he used his voice to speak God's word in that moment. I can't help but think of the words Jesus spoke with his voice about a choice that we could all make. In Matthew chapter six, verse 33 we have it recorded the words of jesus when he said seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness the right living that he would want for our lives and so many good things then will be given to us that's the promise that god's word makes may you hear his voice and may each one of us continue to make that choice yeah these symbols represent aspects of the story, a mat, some sticks, and the paralyzed man was lowered through the roof on a mat as sticks in the roof were broken, as four friends were desperate to bring their friend to Jesus so that he could hear his voice and make a choice. And he didn't just listen to the words of Jesus, he put them into practice and he got up and he walked. Transformation and change took place in the building and in the man's life. He was never the same again as he experienced the love of God. The love of God. And he went from lockdown physically to freedom and liberty. Yeah, what a moment yeah. for that man. He literally um, experienced something completely new. Yeah. It was wonderful. And, and, and if he'd known this song, I'm sure he, he would have sung it with all of his might. It kind of sums up his experience. Lord, I come to you. Let my heart be changed. It, it's a wonderful song, friends. Sing it from your hearts to the one who is the power source of all love and all forgiveness and all freedom and all transformation. And that can happen in a precious moment, even now, as we sing from our homes and then we'll hear from two people from our fellowship as they share with us just what God has taught them through this lockdown.
God has shown me that we all need to take time away from our daily lives to think, listen and pray. The lockdown has meant a change in routine in day-to-day -day activities, work and church life. But I think this process, whilst addressing a pandemic, is also preparing us for a new future. Much has changed due to lockdown, but focus on what is to come. This is both exciting and nerve-wracking, but then look at dealing with lockdown and be reassured. I know we all cope with change differently, but as we've gathered for worship via Facebook or Zoom, kept in touch by phone or by text, it has united our church in many different ways and brought more people into contact with God. So whatever the future holds, take time to consider God's word, listen and pray. Together we can face this new different world as at one church in expectation rather than fear. Amen. The wonderful thing about lockdown is discovery and, and rediscovering the wonder of humanity and learning more about people around about us that we meet casually or even more regularly. And the amazing thing is that God has chosen to share that humanity and adding the dignity of deity uh, in the person of Jesus who came to share it with us. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and God has instilled in us the sense of his love and his goodness. So, friends, keep contact and keep safe. God bless you. Thank you, Helen and Martin. It was good to hear from you and to see you, and we can identify with so much of what you're sharing there. You know, this pandemic has been experienced all over the world. And we do today pray especially for those who have lost loved ones mm. and for those fighting for their lives in hospitals all over the world. So many churches and faith groups and organisations and charities are helping people, showing love in action, including the Salvation Army. So here's the latest update of what we are doing in all kinds of places to help others. In more than 100 countries, the Salvation Army continues to help people in response to coronavirus. Food provision is a key part of the response in many places, but the way to best achieve this varies locally. In the Philippines, teams are helping to feed those quarantined in sports stadiums and other official venues who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. A prepaid grocery voucher scheme is operating in Bahrain, where almost 250 families and individuals have been helped. In Mexico, a similar scheme offers households vouchers which can be exchanged for a food box. Each box is designed to feed a family of three for at least two weeks. Prepared food will also be handed out from the organisation's La Esperanza shelter to 125 homeless people per day for 60 days. In Angola, cereals, beans, oil, sugar and salt have been chosen for their nutritional value in emergency food parcels, providing energy, protein, lipids and essential minerals. 2,000 individuals, mainly women, have been identified as being in great need of this food assistance. The Salvation Army in Belize is continuing its feeding programme for people affected by COVID-19 until at least the end of the month. More than 10,000 food packages have been distributed since the programme began in March. Elsewhere, Food support for vulnerable families is shortly to be introduced following needs assessments in Cuba, Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. In India, the army has provided around 20,000 people with simple snack boxes in an effort to help migrant workers. This includes many lorry drivers who have not been able to return home and are having to walk long distances, as well as others in the transport industry whose jobs have ended while they have been on the move. In New York, USA, cancer patients and other vulnerable people are being helped through deliveries of food and hygiene items. This work is essential in ensuring that those who cannot leave their homes have what they need. The Salvation Army is also trying to help lift spirits for people who are experiencing isolation and cancelled plans. At this time of year, the Salvation Army in Denmark usually works with the Lego Group to arrange a day out at its theme park for families who cannot afford to go on vacation. As this cannot go ahead as planned, 
Lego sets have been distributed to families receiving Salvation Army food parcels. Young people linked with the Army in Copenhagen have been helping to deliver these fun extras thanks to the generosity of the Lego group. The Salvation Army in Sydney, Canada, has arranged an all-age video call with members of the community. Named Brew Unto Others, the Virtual Coffee Morning Initiative is helping to keep the people connected with more than 30 participants sharing news, stories and laughter. Stories of the Salvation Army's response to coronavirus are shared regularly on our website and social media channels. Please pray for our officers, staff, members and volunteers and for hope and resources at this time. We continue to pray for our world in these days, don't we? Yeah. And we thank God that despite lockdown and isolation and social distancing, that God's word is still alive, is still active and living. Amen. Just as we've seen this morning and, and we've heard the story about the man on a mat and the broken roof and that moment of transformation. And so much could be said about that event, couldn't it? Um, but here's just one more. Four friends were willing to break a roof. Yeah to get rid of some obstacles that prevented them yeah. and their friend from getting to Jesus. So here's a simple but poignant question. What obstacles are in your life? What obstacles are in my life that, that come in the way of stopping us from experiencing the transforming power of Jesus? Maybe some sticks, some rooms, some things could be broken today, symbolically speaking. The obstacles of embarrassment could be broken. The, the obstacle of a, a reticence to, to let go. The obstacle of apathy. You know, oh, I can't be bothered, spirit. Let that be broken yeah. today. What about the reminders of, of past stuff? That's an obstacle that we can get rid of because if we're truly sorry, God has forgiven and forgotten so we can be free as that man was in the story. The obstacle, obstacle of the, the reticence to change. Yeah. God changed completely that man mm -hmm. and he allowed God's transforming power to, to be evident in mm -hmm. his life. God is the author of change. Mm -hmm. Break an obstacle today that might represent the reticence to change. What about the obstacle of stubbornness of heart? That's a big one. The obstacle of fear of what letting go could mean. But let's trust the one who knows best and who knows us are best too. And the obstacle of sin. You know, the bad stuff that eats away and spoils us and stops us being the person that God has created us to be. Break some roofs today and be free. You know, in a precious Jesus encountering moment, the man on the mat heard a voice and he made a choice. Yeah. He acted on the words of Jesus and obstacles were removed as he received love and blessing, as he received forgiveness and healing and freedom. And here's the good news. We can receive that today, yeah. in this moment, because Jesus promised to be with us always. So break some rules. Break some obstacles in your heart and your mind and your spirit and your soul and be free today. It's amazing, mm -hmm. isn't it? And that story tells us that all who heard Jesus in that moment were amazed. And it tells us that they've never seen or heard anything like it. Friends, may we continue to be amazed by the love of God, the love he has for you. He really does care and he wants to help you to reach your full potential in him. It really is amazing. So let's have a moment to respond. I think that's really important in the place and the space where you are just now connected with literally thousands who've been joining us for these online services all over the world. Let's think and let's pray and let's break some sticks in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. 
as we listen to a family from our fellowship who during lockdown have found strength yeah. and comfort in singing together. Yeah. Eloise has helped them on the piano as they've shared and sung and their dad has filmed them and put it all together. This will be a special time for all of us. May it be a wonderful moment as we break some obstacles before God. And let's be honest, we've all got something that stops us from being as free as we can be. Just like those people 2,000 years ago who heard the voice of Jesus and made a choice. May we now, as we hear these voices, hear the voice of Jesus and make a choice to be free. Thank you, Lord, that you do not leave us to struggle through life alone, but you help us by your Spirit to overcome the obstacles and to be free. Lord Jesus, we receive your forgiveness, your love, and your transforming Spirit right now. We make this prayer in the amazing name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Bryony and Kelsey and your mum for that song. That was beautiful and helped us to just respond to God and his word today. It's been a really good morning okay. again, and uh, we hope there's been lots to think about. We're aware that we just give you little tasters of the story, um, something to stimulate your mind and your heart and your thinking. So do look at that story in Mark 2 again and dig a little bit deeper and discover what God could be saying to you through it in these days. There are attachments again um, with this video for you to enjoy to use in your own devotions and your personal walk with God. So do take advantage of those. 
For those from Norwich Citadel, our Zoom meeting last week sadly had yeah. to be cancelled due to technical problems. But we're going to meet again today at 4.30. Um, you've been sent the codes and the procedure to log in. And can we remind you to write a name or two names of people that you would like to pray for and write their names on an A5 piece of paper. And we look forward to a special time of worship, of fun and fellowship for all ages later today. Yeah, there's going to be some really special moments in that. So we look forward to seeing you all later. And this week, Andrew will be sharing with women of all ages again for Essence. That will be available on Wednesday at 7.30pm. A video from Andrea and some notes and some prayers and a study for you to follow. That's Essence for Women on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Grab some cake and coffee and enjoy that. And then she'll be working on her latest exciting, wonderful project, won't you? Andrea's aerobics. No way. You, no way. you said. No, I said only if a million votes. And how many? Nowhere near that amount. Well, okay, keep asking no. friends. And, and don't forget to revisit Major Motivator, his exercise video. An exercise video is not for one day, it's for life. So if you want a body like mine, go to YouTube, Major Motivator, once a day and get fit. Friends, thank you for joining with us again this yeah. morning. You know, God is certainly blessing these times together as we meet from places all over the world to focus on God, to connect with our Creator. Yeah. I'm going to sing now with our virtual brass group a wonderful hymn, Lord of All Hopefulness. And then we'll hear the Lord's Prayer. Do you remember yeah. nine, ten weeks ago being told by the Prime Minister um, and government health officials that we must wash our hands for as long as it takes to sing Happy, Happy Birthday, birthday yeah. twice. Yeah. Well, we still need to wash our hands. That's, that's really important. But we can do it to the Lord's Prayer, the family prayer that Jesus taught us. I think it's slightly mm. longer, so it will be better for us on all kinds yeah. of levels. Yeah. <laughs> we first heard this prayer a few weeks ago and we had a wonderful response to it. So let's sing to God and then pray the prayer together. God bless you, friends. Goodbye. Keep safe. is in heaven.
forgive us our sins as we forgive those that have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you. 